Hey up everyone, so as some of you know, and Brad actually came over to England a few months back and in the time that he was here we got up to a load of stuff. Um, one of those things includes our... <coughs> one of those things includes our 48 hours in London and Paris. From both of our Twitter accounts it probably seems like the trip was really, you know, like a walk in the park and really easy. Um, you are about to find out that is not the case. To start our journey, we woke up at 7 in the morning to catch our coach from Sheffield to London and to be honest, this should have been a dead giveaway that the trip was doomed from the start. Because just as we were nearing the bus station at Sheffield, Ambrad begins to panic because he forgot his phone in the flat. After Ambrad had ran into the distance, this was the moment that the anxiety started kicking in. Missing the first coach would mean that we would end up missing the coach from London to Paris and lose a lot of money. I also forgot to add that Anbrad had just drank a liter of milk. Not the greatest thing to take when you're sprinting through a city. Thankfully, just before I started losing my mind, I look into the distance and see the silhouette of a very ill-looking Canadian sprinting towards me. So we made the coach on time. I just want to apologize first for the lack of footage that I actually have from this trip. I was constantly anxious and I didn't really film too much. Here's some photos though. Sorry. We spent basically the entire day in London after meeting up with one of my friends from college, Callum. Callum basically saved our lives in London and worked as our kind of tour guide and without him I'm pretty convinced we would both have gotten lost and probably died somehow. So Callum, thanks. We spent the day doing the usual touristy stuff and before we knew it we ended up in France. After getting the coach from London to Paris at about 7am in the morning, it kind of dawned on us that the weather was not going to be on our side. Because we were lied to by the coach company um, and told that there would be plugs on the coach, neither of us had charged phones or internet. So at this point, it was 7am, neither of us had phones or a map, it was raining relatively heavily and because it was Sunday there was nobody on the streets. Also, I literally don't speak a word of French apart from je n'ai pas de papier, which was not very helpful in the situation. Eventually we did actually manage to find someone and ask for directions, however this was after six hours of walking through rain. Although we never actually argued once during the whole panic of it, so that is the power of friendship. Friendship baby. Woo! Ambrad isn't actually here with me to talk about the experience, but I know that he'll agree with me on this point in that the hotel was beyond amazing. The staff were so helpful, and even though we never actually learned the guy's name, we just ended up calling him Benji. It probably wasn't his name, but thanks Benji, you were so helpful and you saved us in Paris. We spent about an hour in the hotel sauna, which was so f hot and then we went out and found like French snacks outside in some shops and stuff and basically spent the rest of the night watching TV that neither of us understood. We are currently planning our trip out of Paris. Check out all this this smart sh** do. Some math works. That's where we gotta go and that's where we are. Dylan in the bedroom. Back to you. We woke up the next morning at 9am. Well, one of us did, at least. Bearing in mind that we had planned the entire day upon waking up at 9am. Regardless of the fact we were already behind schedule by like an hour, we decided it was a good idea to get some breakfast, walk around for a bit and see the Eiffel Tower. This was the beginning of the end. After seeing the Eiffel Tower, we began our walk to the coach station. Now, we had asked people in the hotel and outside how long the walk would take and they all said two hours. It took three. Unfortunately, we realized this in the second hour, so we were way behind schedule and the coach was meant to get to the station in an hour. This was the point where panic started to kick in and we didn't realize we could have just got a taxi. So, please don't think I'm exaggerating when I say we literally sprinted through Paris city center for an hour in skinny jeans. In these shoes! We finally got to the coach station 10 minutes after our coach was meant to have left and obviously we'd missed it. We were forced to pay for new tickets back to England and to our surprise it was in 9 hours time. At this point we were both going a little crazy, however we didn't argue. Friendship. Around the seventh hour of waiting, we had both kind of calmed down a little and thought it was a good idea to, while we were there, just 
do things in Paris. So we went out for a little meal in the pub like next door to the station and this was kind of the point where everything was going better. We both had actually nice meals. Our coach was like an hour away from us and it was just really chilled out. Just sat talking to my friend who I'd never met in person and the fact that we got to kind of like share this thing. It was just cool, you know? I really enjoyed it. I don't know how Brad feels about it. He could have hated the moment, who knows? Two hours later, we got on the coach and started heading back to London on what was probably the most relaxing bus journey of my entire life. 11 p.m., we were driving through this like thunderstorm. It was so warm on the coach and I was just sat down listening to music. Being inside when it's raining is super chill and if you disagree with me, me, you're wrong. The next day we arrived in London, having to wait a few more hours for our coach back to Sheffield. Not much happened, but that coach sucked. I can't actually put into words the relief when I actually got back to my flat in Sheffield. After going through such like a horrible time for so long, I was so relieved to get back and just be happy sitting in my flat and never going outside again. After we got back, we went paintballing the next day and did loads of crazy stuff for the next like two weeks. And that pretty much concludes our trip to Paris. I did just want to point out that me and Ambrad have since talked about the whole Paris thing on numerous occasions. And we both kind of agreed that even though at the time it was an awful, awful experience, we're both kind of glad that it happened how it did. It's like it's more memorable almost. Like if we'd just gone and that had happened, um, we went to the coach and whatever, we just went sightseeing. I feel like it would have been boring and I mean I wouldn't have been able to make a video about it so that's always a plus. So and Brad, thanks for not killing me when I was stressed out and Bryony and my mum, thanks for just not killing me in general. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any similar stories where your holidays or your plans went terribly wrong, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to check every single one out. Also, a side note, for those who don't know, me and David actually made a vlogging channel. We, we film every day and then upload on Sunday every week. The channel is called Shutter Socks and we kind of just wanted to give everyone a bit of an insight on what we're actually like um, just in our daily lives and not for main channel videos and things like that. So yeah, if, if vlogging is your kind of thing, please feel free to check it out. Give us some feedback and maybe subscribe if you like the videos. Yeah, thanks and goodbye.